So this is my cool SA-10 amplifier, realistic, from 1979. Uh, got from eBay, but I had one back in the day. I never had one new. But this one's interesting. It's got a, a few interesting things, this one. It's serial number 87. Now, this was a mass-produced amplifier, Radio Shack. Um, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, tens of, yeah, hundreds of thousands, maybe more, uh, molded in Taiwan. And that's the part number. I don't know if you can see it. Anyways, it's got a, a bit of an attempt at shielding. It's just that sticky aluminum tape. And I guess it just contacts from the bottom. And there's the chassis. So yeah, on the front, it's kind of strange. It has tape tuner and a phono, power, mono, stereo. Okay. And it's got left and right volume. And a tone, just a simple tone knob. And then lovely, lovely faux wood grain with the chrome accents. But it's still in good shape. No cracks or nothing like that. Serial number 87. Anyways, um, I took it apart because, uh, well, one, the front was kind of bashed in a little bit. One of the pots was in, in a bit. And I noticed, well, this one's kind of loosey-goosey. It's pretty loose. But it's strange. Like, you know, this is tone, left, right. So these two are the same pots. See? They're the same. 100,000K or something like that. And then there's the tone pot. But see, they're different. They These these two don't have any uh, retaining nut on them for some reason. But they never had. <laughs> like you can tell, there's never been any washer or anything. So I don't know. One of them had a washer on the front, but no nut. And then they all three of them still had their dust caps. There's the knob. Kind of funny. It's funny that the paint's on the inside a bit too. Just cause it's shot. Oh, it's shot. Is it shot? No, no, it's just a groove with paint in it. It's just bled back. Anyways, so yeah, it's kind of strange, but it was, this this piece was bent a little bit back. It, obviously, it had got some trauma and got pushed to push forward. So I straightened it out, and uh, I also got in because I wanted to, you know, clean out the pots. They're pretty easy to clean. They're open, you know, whatever. They're a little stranger where the a little stranger, a little different pot type of pot you know they still got the three three legs you know there's the full the wiper and the and then the, the resistor uh but the wiper also has a third or a second leg on the top that goes to this little resistor here i'm pretty sure it's the same here we can check real quick Pretty sure. Uh, I'm gonna do the old one-handed YouTube fun. Yeah, let's see if I can get it on there. Oh, it's ground. <laughs> oh, cause I'm touching the top. Yeah. Hmm. Sure, yeah. 
the middle one's the shell, and that's definitely the wiper. Anyways, I digress. Uh, but, so, I'm just looking through it, you know, it's also, you know, it's built to a price, but it's built nicely, you know. There's a little bit of a look on the inside here. Uh, there's the transistor, I guess there's two stages per channel. It's got the world's simplest power supply, bridge rectifier, whatever that would be. There's only two diodes, so that's like half wave, whatever, half wave, quarter wave rectified. Anyway, smoothing cap, I guess. And yeah, this is the tone. See, they got a little a little schematic of the, and then here they just have volume, and then it's sort of buried in the bottom. I don't know if I can get it. It says L by the middle post there. That went to his right. But, um, you know, I'm giving it a good look over because it is. It's from 1979. It's uh, actually it says right here. Uh, May 8, 1979. There's no real other markings of. Note. Anyways, yeah, it's about twelve. It's about thirteen volts DC. Uh, but anyways, I'm looking through it. I'm looking through it. There's a couple of things I noted. One, the it's got a tape tuner and a phono. Well, it doesn't have a phono preamp. It's just a line level preamp. Because the way the, the switch works, see there's the single switch, the middle one, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward switch. And basically these two wires here are left, right. They go to the main board and then to the amplifier. And those get picked up from this little daughter boardy thing here, which is connected to that switch. And the switch picks the two different inputs and these color wires are the inputs back here to go to these RCAs. And so all it, all it's doing is basically picking a pair, either the whatever, these two or these two, that's all it's doing. And then sending it to the that brown and blue wire. That's all it's doing. So there's no separate phono preamp or anything. It's really just two tape tuner Inputs they would ex I know realistic. I have one kicking around. They sold a phono preamp So you would have had a dedicated phono preamp uh, And plug this in so really it's just the label, but uh, but it has no preamp. It's just uh, so kind of nice to know I guess uh, and That's I believe the Canadian The Canadian one Home entertainment device Printed in Canada, yeah. So that's the Canadian CSA, yeah, yeah, CSA. Caution shock hazard, blah, blah, blah. 12 watts. Passed. Quality Assurance Department. And here's all the other business. That's the old, old logo. Division of Tandy. Uh, and this, uh, uh, Barry still. And there's the model number, SA10. So it's a handy little thing, but yeah, they cheaped out. So the speakers are on uh, RCAs as well as the input. So I've got these handy dandy little RCA to uh, speaker terminal adapters. Which brings me to my discovery. And looking at it, I was going on about because of the date it was made. I wanted to look at the solder joints. I'm going to reflow those those wiggly ones up here. But I just want to make sure everything looked okay, you know. And then I saw this. I'm going to get something to point with. Uh, yeah, that's fine. More light. 
the side, maybe. That seems to work. If they conveniently, well, what am I doing here? They conveniently labeled everything for us, right? So we got funnel left, right? Tape tuner. And then speakers. Left, right. But do you notice anything here? Is there anything kind of jumping out at you? Looking at this. This way. Yeah. I'm kind of jumping out at you. This wire here <laughs> soldered between the two center conductors. This is a bridge. They're bridging this to mono. Uh, now, why? This isn't f factory. I can tell there's like a little piece of flux on this. Well, you can see it kind of down there on the, on the heat sink on the back. There's a little piece of flux back there. So somebody somewhere along the line has been in here. I can tell someone's been here at one point because this has been ripped up a bit on the bottom. This aluminum tape. So, yeah, very, very curious here. There's just a little bridge here. So there could have been two reasons that was done. It would explain why when I did the left and right knob on the front before, which is kind of why I opened it, I wanted to clean it up. I thought maybe some, I don't know. It's just that, you know, you adjusted one and both speakers would adjust. Uh, and that explains exactly why. Now, there's two reasons, two reasons that that would have happened. Either one of the channels is dead and the che cheap, quick, dirty fix is just bridge, you know, just bridge whatever, the right one's still working, then just bridge it and then it'll just drive both outputs, but you're only getting one channel. Uh, or another also likely scenario is uh, maybe it was driving not a subwoofer, but a center channel for uh, TV for surround early, uh, what was it, ProLogic, uh, for, like for Dolby ProLogic. Back in the day, we used to do a thing also called a, a, a Phantom Center. So you would basically take the left-right difference and you, you run it to a center speaker and then you, it's kind of like a poor man's ProLogic decode. Uh, but I have a hunch, I have a hunch that like it's just a, you know, a five watt amp. I don't think, you know, someone made it mono to uh, run a, a single subwoofer. Uh, I find it more likely that they made it mono just to make it a quick fix or they made it mono to make it drive a center channel um, uh, speaker for a, a ProLogic early surround sound where he had center channel dialogue. Uh, that's my guess. Very strange. So I'm going to pop that out. And uh, see if I still get two channels. Or if I only get one. Back in a minute. I'm back. So, indeed, I removed that little bridge that was here. Uh, hooked it up. And it works fine. So, my guess, aside from this being all kind of wonky, uh, I'll find some new some new screws for or nuts but yeah took that little jumper out now it's full stereo works fine both channels bit of a hum but i think it's just because i got nothing nothing's wrapped around it <laughs> like it, it's high tech uh anti uh, noise anyways I'm just gonna slap it back together. If that didn't, if I had a bad channel, what I was gonna do is take this thing, uh, the 
wuzzy. This is a stereo amplifier. There is the wuzzy. Wuzzy. Anyways, it's got Bluetooth. There's a little input volume. That's it. Takes a wide range of input. So I was just going to kind of do that. Re reconnect the pots to the front. I was even going to use the the tone circuit. I think the tone circuit. Well, he got one job. I don't want it to stop recording. I have my phone set when I tap it to go to the magnifier and I tapped it by accident just by brushing it with this hand. I thought I tapped it three times on the back and opened the magnifier while I was recording and quit recording. So I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, so I'm just going to drop that. <laughs> Drop it in more or less like that, stick it in there, and Bob's your uncle, but uh, it works fine. It works fine. 